tuning in to the online broadcast network, AfterBuzz TV. Over 20 million weekly downloads in over 150 countries and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Johnson. TV, the destination for TV superfans, producing after shows for over 300 of your favorite TV shows, interviewing celebrities and showrunners, and bringing you behind the scenes exclusives. All thanks to E Entertainment's Maria Menunos, producer Kevin Undergaro, and internet leader Akamai. Now, let the buzz begin! <laughs> Hey everybody, welcome back to the Banshee After Show here on AfterBuzz TV. Talking about Season 3, Episode 9. Even God doesn't know what to make of you. I'm Matt Lieberman. Joining me as always, fantastic panel is here. Mr. Monis Rose is here. Hey, what's going on? Oriana Leo is here. Hello, Fanchies and Fanchie Babes. And Isaac Johnson is here. Hello as well, Fanchie Babes. Yeah, whoa! Ooh. I did it, oh yeah. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I do. Yeah. Hey, hey uh, Britt is going to be tweeting every time we say Fanchie Babes on this cast. Really? And that's three times already. Oh, oh boy. Fancy uh, babes. Four. Fancy babes. We also have fantastic yes. guest here, Mr. Langley Kirkwood, who plays Colonel Stowe on the show. Welcome to the show, sir. Thank you, and uh, hello, fancy babes. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we're all doing it. Yes. Yeah. And and just so no one has has it twisted, at the top of the show, you could kind of hear Langley say something. He was not saying that he dies on the show. He was answering a question of ours, and it is in no way contextual. It has nothing to do with the show. <laughs> Absolutely nothing. Nothing to do We're with the show. We're talking about something else completely different. Something entirely different. Mm -hmm. uh, like, I'm dying a little bit inside trying to maintain this, like, happy face like trying to do this bit right now and knowing that it's tanking. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, perhaps we should find out what's going on with you, Matt Lieberman. There's Oh, yeah. sure. So, so, just so anyone who's watching he, doesn't he, think that you've it's been a while. He's 20 years since we last saw him. Yeah, there was a 20 year gap between episodes 8 and 9. No, uh, at work today <laughs> we were shooting a uh, a Tomorrowland parody and I was I was playing George Clooney. I didn't have time to get my makeup off, so I'm still Clooneyfied uh, right now. But <laughs> This episode, yes. great episode. Yes. Now we awesome talked. Episode. We talked last week uh, with with Greg Utanis about how you know, in many ways, last episode could have been a season finale. Absolutely. And this episode was entirely about a paying off Kai's journey uh, mm -hmm. over this whole season and setting up this uh, must be epic finale. How'd you feel about it? Uh, I felt great about it. Um, like seeing the, um, I like seeing the uh, the Job Hood sort of like, uh, like they're like exes, like kind of like maybe on the ropes there. Mm -hmm. Like thought that was really fun. Yeah. I I was blown away at the amount of information that was introduced in this episode. Mm -hmm. I I was excited but also kind of mad. You can't take this all away after one more episode. I want to know so yeah. much more. Mm -hmm. So I'm excited, but now I'm already having banshee sweats for season four <laughs> and it hasn't even started filming yet. You know, this episode in particular, but this show in general, things do not linger. You know, I mean, yes, this the robbery, the heist happened and boom, it was like point after point after point of every prediction that I wanted was fulfilled and is being fulfilled especially in this episode i mean yes you had the backstory kai went full circle i mean you know gordon is getting back on track i i mean stowe is becoming even more of a madman i mean <laughs> I think, but that, I think he's already mad. Yeah, well, know, yeah, absolutely. Triggered. Okay, we need to talk about yeah. that. Yeah. <laughs> you got him all wrong. Yeah. Really? Do yes. we have him all wrong, yeah, Langley? Yeah, please, yeah. please, please elaborate. Please. <laughs> well, you know, this guy's, um, I think the, the thing that we, we focused on before we started shooting the season, um, what Greg and Jonathan and Adam Targum wanted me to um to focus on a lot was his post-traumatic stress disorder mm -hmm. and obviously how that has affected him um, and, we, and, and Stowe actually goes into it uh, in the, the, the I suppose the discipline disciplining Haddock scene mm -hmm. um, just before he actually launches into beating the crap out of out of Haddock he um, he's telling him about um, what happened back in Afghanistan mm -hmm. where he lost his whole team and he was doing some kind of uh, you know I guess black ops Op operation some mm -hmm. kind of unofficial thing and he felt let down by by his government right. um and and obviously losing his whole team him just surviving there was all sorts of trauma 
involved in that. And 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 I guess the you know the the question is how far did that affect him? How deeply did, did that affect him? And in which way does it kind of manifest uh, you know itself? And I think you know it's fair to say that there's some kind of psychosis that has developed. Yeah. Sure. Um, <laughs> but um, you know it's 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 just it's I, I guess as a result of severe PTSD mm -hmm. um, that he's he's kind of he's transformed into this monster. I yeah. would just guess that he also has severe brain trauma as well. Like that that slide into psychosis might have been aided by getting rattled many times. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, he because he 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 ran an elite team for so many years. Mm -hmm. Obviously, there's been a lot of uh, stuff going on. <laughs> yeah. A lot of exp maybe one explosion too many next to his head. Or well, yeah. maybe uh, maybe being shot with a 12 gauge shotgun and still coming three times <laughs> in the chest. Yeah. Hey, look, yeah. you know, he had a bulletproof. There was Kevlar, you know. Uh, uh, really great. Kevlar. How many good, layers good Kevlar. of Kevlar? <laughs> Like Kevlar and then also stone, Kevlar <laughs> well, and concrete. You know, he's a hard man. That's yes. true. I, I bet yeah. you it's the abs. Yeah. It's oh, the power oh, abs. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's interesting. Just abs of steel. Come on. Yeah, that's true. That's it's interesting true. to hear you say that, though, Langley, because you're painting a very interesting uh, parallel between you and Chayton. Yeah. Chayton, who felt that society had let him and, his, and all of his people down, that had yeah. cut down so many of his people, and that mm -hmm. he was going to take something back. Well, that's it. That's, and that's how I, he feels totally justified in, in stealing the money from the government. He doesn't mm -hmm. see it as stealing. Mm -hmm. He sees it as, I guess, compensation for, for what's, been, what's been done to him and how he's been wronged, and he's just getting a bit of his own back. Right. Um, you know, taking it for himself. Yeah, I kind of see him as like a bit of a patriot too, or at least in his mind, that's kind of where he's Absolutely. at. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and you know, I mean, that's the, you, when you're playing a character like this, you have to find a way of falling in love with him and you have to find a way in there in the first place. And, I, you know, I, I, I do think that at some stage in his life, he was a serious hero. Mm -hmm. He really was uh, a patriot. He was, he 100% believed in, in what he was doing and right. believed that it was the right thing. Mm -hmm. And, um, and you know, somewhere along the line, I think I think this happens so much to to so many veterans, wh where they they do you know through through doing their heroic heroic duty, mm -hmm. they unfortunately do they get altered, man, and yeah. they, and, yeah, and, and a lot of them never come back uh, mentally anyway. The ones that do come back physically are often mm -hmm. they're not the same. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Can I ask you a question? Uh, is the relationship with Carrie, which obviously not in the best place right now, no, um, no. was that his first uh, real romantic stab at things since he came back? No, okay. no. Look, I think he, he, he's qu he's quite a he's a physical guy. Yeah, mm -hmm. and um, and uh, I think sex for him is is part of his the physical kind of fulfillment that he he needs and kind of. You know, he's a he's a he's a he's a he's an exercise addict without a doubt, mm -hmm. and I think sex is just kind of part of, part of that, and I think he probably has you know numerous he's had numerous sexual partners mm -hmm. uh, over time, but for the most part casual sex. I think Carrie is is someone who Carrie was an exception, where she actually got under his skin. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, where for for her, I think he's he is exact. He's just he's he's satisfying. Right. He's man meat. Yeah, yes. exactly. He's power at. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. But, but Carrie, you know, with her, with her, because she's such an incredible energy, he he falls for her. He mm -hmm. really, he, you know, um, and and so because of course there is that thin line between love and hate. Yes. Right. We, when he feels so completely betrayed by her on the different levels, you know, both romantically and because he realizes he's been played. Right. You also yeah. you you just actually mentioned a lot of similarities from your character to Hood. I mean, those yep. those are very similar. I mean, Hood is yep. this wolf that, I mean, especially um, it seems, or it, in some of the previous episodes that he just wants women for women. I mean, yes, he has changed some ways, but, you know, he's a fighter. He has gone through, there, maybe not in war, but he has gone through some uh, post-traumatic stress in ways. I mean, your characters are very, yeah. very similar. I think there's a, the difference, the key difference is that with, with Hood, there is an awareness of, of, of the change that's right. gone on in him. Yeah. Um, and an acceptance almost. Mm -hmm. right. A resigned kind of acceptance to mm -hmm. it. And, yeah. But he just gets on with it. Whereas Stowe's, there's a denial there. Mm -hmm. he, he really thinks mm -hmm. he's 
100% in control uh, f for the most part until he, you know, he starts having these little voices in right. his head. Um, and we saw some of that last episode. Mm -hmm. well, and then yeah. even earlier on with the, the mirror shot where mm -hmm. it's like a blurry shot like over the, over the shoulder where mm -hmm. it's kind of like him losing focus on himself. Yeah. It's so funny, the great point you made, Monis, because I wrote down the same thing with Hood about PTSD because of the blurry vision mm -hmm. and, and, and the, the echoes of the siege on the caddy that mm -hmm. if he seems to be fraying a bit at the edges, mm -hmm. which he should, I mean, he should be at this point, I guess. Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah, but it's also what makes them such an interesting uh, combination for what is ultimately going to be an incredible fight next episode. Mm -hmm. I mean, we, it's got to happen. But it's just like the way that you physically you're portrayed on the show, you're like a walking man weapon. You're the Terminator. <laughs> yeah, the yes, T-1000. Totally. You're the T-1000, 100%. Yes. Yeah. In, the, in episode seven, down in the tunnels, when you just come out of nowhere and it's just like all like massive limbs. <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's like a mech. I'm and like, also Jesus. the experience for us watching that with the YouTube, with the uh, GoPros. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was the head cams. It was yeah. terrifying. Mm -hmm. It felt like fighting you and I yeah. don't want to do that. Yeah. <laughs> Good. <laughs> uh, let's talk about Stowe's relationship with Leo, mm -hmm. his uh, head of technology. Yeah. Uh, you know, the, um, these are two guys who, uh, Dennis Flanagan, who plays Leo, he and I, we spoke about this in depth, and with, obviously with, with the writing team, and with Greg, and with Lonnie. Um, there's no love between these two guys. Mm -hmm. They are thrown together uh, because they need each other. Um, I think you know Stowe has found the the best guy that he needs to do what Leo does, mm -hmm. as, uh, and uh, they both kind of grudgingly mm -hmm. accepting each other because sure. they need each other. Mm -hmm. um, a marriage of convenience. A marriage of convenience, absolutely. And you'll see in the in the uh, in the finale, it, it uh, yeah, there, there's a very interesting <laughs> twist to it. Uh, with regard to, to Leo. Well, it seems like Leo, he just wants to find out about Joe. He really doesn't... Right. He, I mean, yes... He's he got just, like a hacker crush on him. Oh, he's, he's, he's got a serious man crush mm -hmm. on him. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, I like, yeah. I, first of all, I think the actor is phenomenal. I love yeah. his performance. He gets so excited when he's talking about Joe, but only, yeah. didn't quite put it together until the end. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I'm really scared for Joe because I wouldn't want to be drugged beaten and handcuffed by my ultimate fanboy. Right. It's like Misery or Swim Fan, <laughs> but they're both dangerous hackers, mm -hmm. probably both with great fight skills. Isaac? Maybe. I don't know. We haven't seen his fight skills yet, but he's got a He's, he's got a, a creep. Series. If you're going to use double the Double the sedative. sedative. I mean, he did a good job, but that's pretty cool. Well, he says, like, he's the hacker. He's not a hacker. And this mm. is, like, he's starstruck pretty much when yeah. he meets him. Yeah. It is the interesting piece of trivia. Mm. Uh, he and Tom Pelfrey are very good friends. Yeah. From interesting. Back in the day. Yeah, Tom said that. Were we, not when we were taping, but he told yep. me that. And I was like, oh, that's cool. Yeah. What are the chances? Yeah, what are the odds? <laughs> yeah. uh, and we'll be talking about Tom's character a little bit later mm -hmm. in the show. Um, so you you guys, you both, you quickly move against the team. Once he has found uh, our dummy our dummy IDs from uh, from the security company, right, yeah. yep. and uh, it means it leads immediately back to Sugar. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> and uh, I was really scared for Sugar watching the two of you, yep. oh, and yeah. uh, he nearly bought it with that. Like that gun was the size of Texas. <laughs> uh <-huh. laughs> yeah. That was a crazy gun. It's mm -hmm. a crazy gun. That was one of my favorite scenes to shoot. Mm -hmm. I think just because it was so different from everything else that that that, that Stowe does mm -hmm. and Stowe did on the season uh, during the season, uh, and I really love Frankie as an actor. Yeah. So it was it, for me. It was just it was a real treat to get in there and do that. We we still play each other. Uh, Scrabble words on friends. Yeah. Words, on friends. words on friends. We send each other words every day, <laughs> and I'm I'm kicking his ass. Oh, so, nice. for the record. <laughs> for the record. So. I love that scene with you two at the bar because I feel like you could. You were. It felt like both the characters are enjoying telling the other to f off. Mm -hmm. yeah. You know, oh, yeah. like of course. Sugar must be afraid at some point. Yeah, well, he knows. Yeah. He, he knows his numbers up the moment I walk in the door. Exactly. Yeah. So did you decide that Colonel So is a Maker's Mark kind of guy? Or, I mean, <laughs> yeah. how did this come about? You could order whatever you want, and you yeah. ordered the Maker's. No, that Adam Adam Targum and, and, and Jonathan, that was all their, 
uh, they had him they had him pegged as a as a maker's mark. All right, so a little more than Jack Daniels. Yeah, man, just <laughs> exactly. Mm. I just want to do he's, a quick he's, shout out for Adam Targum <laughs> because Relativity just tapped him to adopt the Fearless book. We, he talked about it last time. Yes, he but did. it's been picked up by oh, Relativity. So congratulations. Was, Yay! Congrats, Adam. That was my news and gas. <laughs> oh, was it? Just, did, was, well, you should have no, told no, me. No. We were talking about he PTSD. He likes to keep it a surprise, so he is fresh. Do we have like a news and gas? Yeah, and we that's like when that. we're supposed to do those kinds of chatters. <laughs> okay. Uh, you know what? Let's take this strange second to talk about iTunes. Because you know, the best way to support AfterBuzz TV is to go to iTunes and rate and review the shows that you listen to or that you watch on YouTube. It's quick, it's easy, it doesn't take more than a second, and it doesn't cost you a single solitary dime. You can also go to our YouTube page, youtube.com slash AfterBuzz TV, and subscribe to our channel. Your subscriptions, your ratings, your reviews help keep us alive. They're how we get our sponsors, how we get great guests like Langley. It's how they know that we have a quality, quality network here with great shows. So please continue to support the network. You also get a great shout out here on the show. Yeah, you do. This one goes out to. Don't know how to say this. Gifu Mara? Mm. I wish I would have thought for the Banshee podcast a while ago because it is superb. Oh, thank you. Thank um, you. That's awesome. Also from, why why, why are these names so difficult? This is like just oh, It's JD, a bunch of letters all together. It's JD, J. And X N, something long word. Automatopoeia. Um, fantastic <laughs> podcast for Fanshee Babes. Oh, and no. it's catching on. There we go. Phenomenal accompaniment to the best show ever. Yes. Boom. Did you just say Fancy Babes? Yes, Fancy oh. Babes. Fancy yeah. Babes. Should it, should it not be a drinking game? I but think it yes. should. Yes. <laughs> not to be advocated. We would never do that. Right, 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 right. Um, and then this last one says Matt Lieberman Ooh. is a riot. Oh. oh. He Go is. You. He is. I would say he's more of a sit-in, maybe a peaceful podcast. <laughs> Come on, but, um, man. Even on here. Even um, on here. No, I appreciate awesome it. Awesome podcast insights to the hardest working man at AfterBuzz. Oh, wow. So it's very, very oh, kind. That's of so sweet of them to talk about me. Yeah, it's very sweet of them to talk about <laughs> Stephen <laughs> yeah. Lemieux. I would have said it's Stephen Lemieux. Yeah, so sweet oh, 100%. Too. Kevin Undergar. I don't know. Any of these yeah. people. Very hard. Uh, all right. In any case... <laughs> Uh, we need to we need to move on just because we we're short on time and I want to talk about everything in this episode. We're going to come mm. back uh, to to Langley and please feel free to jump in on any of these. Uh, so let's talk about Job and Sheriff Hood, mm -hmm. who we finally get to see the moment that they meet in this episode, which was stellar. We had a uh, Hoon Lee, I believe, teased that a few episodes ago with mm -hmm. us uh, that we would finally get to see it, and it did not disappoint. Um, I love Job's 90s hair. Amazing. Yeah. 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 Uh, Langley pointed out that the Twin Towers were in the background mm -hmm. during that chase scene, which I didn't notice. Yeah. Um, yeah. But I love that Hood was the assassin, was mm -hmm. sent in to assassinate him, and that's how that whole thing started. Yeah. Well, you know, it's again, it's a marriage of convenience that became something more. Mm -hmm. uh, and we finally get to see the moment even when, uh, when Sheriff Hood's identity was erased from the mm -hmm. world. Like, right. it's something that you know had to have happened at some point, but I never thought about it. I was never like, yeah, that must have happened at some point. I was like, oh, the government must have did it. No. We also are introduced uh, retroactively to a new character, Dalton, mm -hmm. uh, who is someone that Hood was working for at one point, and, and Job as well. So maybe, much like how Brantley was mentioned in season two and then mm -hmm. came in season three, maybe this is a figure that will rear his ugly head in season four. I think for sure. Yeah? Sure. Yeah. I also, like, there was a really cool, like, sort of meta reference to Clint Eastwood in there, mm -hmm. the man with no name. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, let's just say, um, I just thought it was cool. Like, um, you know, he, you have him losing Shaban in, like, his closest relationship. And his other closest relationship has to be Job. Yeah. You know what I mean? So, the, like, you have them, like I said, sort of at the top that they're having, like, almost like this, like, ex-lovers quarrel or something like that. But then they... They're breaking up. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's like a breakup. Job is Even like, with uh, him, like, I'm on done. the phone with him. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, but stylistically, I you pointed out they didn't need to tell us this was a flashback. This was 1994. This was, I mean, with the background, the twin yeah. towers, the face. with yeah, the yeah. face, the face moving. Mm -hmm. yeah, Joven is like smashing pumpkins. Yes, yeah. exactly. <laughs> we 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 knew immediately. I mean. It, it was yes it was nice to see hood without a beard but more so with the other um aspects of this scene also you know uh, you were pointing out the only person who knows who hood really is besides hood is job he has that mm -hmm. on him yeah 
It's true. He knows his name is Gary. <laughs> yes, <laughs> Gary. Uh, no, it's That's what Ant says his name is. It's a huge bummer that they're that they're <laughs> on the rocks. I I have to hope that rescuing him uh, will change things and bring things back to normal. But honestly, I have no idea whether or not these two will ever patch things up. Yeah. Uh, which is a huge problem for us Job fans because that kind of leaves Job with no reason to be on the show. We'll find a reason. Yes. Uh, yeah, we'll find a reason. Is anyone afraid? The next episode, Joe bites it. I'm afraid, and I don't. Let's not talk about it because I don't want to will it into existence, no. even though it's already been written and shot. Look, shot. guys, we have to be realistic oh. here. In this finale, someone has to die. For sure, someone has to die. We we are too deep in shit right now. I think this for is predictions everyone, territory. I know this is predictions it's not, territory. It's not going to be Job. It's not. He's, it can't. It no. can. First of all, but if it's not Job, it's Sugar. Most, it could be Sugar. Yeah, it probably he could be. But you can't. You can't take away the characters. Both characters that are most important to Hood. I don't. I don't think that you can do that. Well, well you can't take away both. But yeah. Job is so rich. He, well, no, Job, they can't take him away. If Sh- if Shaban's if they, away. They've already taken away Shaban. They yeah. can't take away Job as well. And then he has really kind of no one left. His All relationship right. with Anna's. Langley, you want to weigh in on this, please? I'm, I'm just enjoying watching oh. you guys. <laughs> <laughs> um, you know, I, I think you need to you need to bear in mind that this you know this is all building up to an incredible showdown at the yeah. end. Mm-hmm. Um, and... Uh, Lonnie Perister has made reference to kind of the good, the bad, and the ugly. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. So, you know, draw your own conclusions from that. Mm-hmm. Um, but uh, it, this is Banshee. And, uh, <laughs> Hashtag <laughs> blood in do, Banshee. Yeah. Do, you really, do you really see this season finale going down without someone dying? I see someone dying. I just feel like, man, like, can we have another It definitely cannot be Servito. Dying? It cannot be Brock. Oh no. God! I, it better not be that would Brock. Bro- that no one. He's beard. essential. Yeah. Brock's beard, essential. It's essential. Yeah. Hashtag Brock's beard. Yeah. Um, <laughs> so we'll see what happens with that in the in the finale. Mm-hmm. I want to talk about Kai, who's in deep deep crud mm-hmm. this episode. Mm-hmm. He's been kidnapped by Fraser, um, who is played by uh, what is is Ron Ron C. Ron C. Jones. Ron C. Jones. Yeah. Ron C. Jones who was also on Low Winter Sun. Really? He was Reverend Lowdown yes, on was. Low Winter yeah. Sun. Yes, he, he was. was the best part of that show. That only lasts for, like one season or yeah, something. For yeah. reference, Matt and I met on Low Winter Sun. On the after show for Low Winter yeah. Sun, and we had to watch that whole thing, and it was a nightmare. Mm-hmm. Um, but <laughs> we made it. it's such a pleasure to see him back on TV, mm-hmm. and uh, he is a thoroughly intimidating presence, mm-hmm. uh, cold as ice, just like Kai. And I love watching um, Ulrich Thompson in this scene as he recognizes, he realizes that the reason why Fraser kidnapped him is something he had no idea about. But then rather than push the issue, Mm -hmm. he also knows there's no point. Mm -hmm. There's no point in pushing the issue. Uh, Fraser's not going to ever buy that he said that you know this didn't actually happen or that it was wasn't under his control, and also it makes him look weak to admit. That's what I was going to say. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I don't think that. I mean, I think that moment where he asks about the drugs or whatever, and they drop it in front of him, and he kind of plays it off as if he kind of knew about it, but maybe he was hiding it. Is exactly that that mm-hmm. he can't look weak in front of him. And also that that the reason that he's in this situation is because of Emily. Emily sort of made him weak. And I see him taking some ownership yeah. over, taking some ownership it's over, like, putting himself fault. in this position. If he, <laughs> if he, re- well, no, but if he had remained, <laughs> you have to go there. If he had remained strong and and been the person or the guy that we know, and you know, right. obviously he was grieving over his mother and stuff mm-hmm. like this. But if he had remained that person, this stuff with Rebecca would have never gone outside of his understanding. I don't think exactly because he's got a you know tight grip on his his organization. But I take issue with that because don't. he's not. I see you. It, was he weak? <laughs> For being human, for feeling vulnerable. feelings, like vulnerable, vulnerable, but he should have stayed strong. Like I was loving that development. This Me is too. way more I fun. Think it was but cool, but I think I love seeing his humanity. I think he's a character who realizes that he can't be vulnerable like that. This just shows it just takes a nice good beating to get Kai Pra Kai Proctor back to being Kai Proctor. Apparently. <laughs> well yeah, if he had listened, if he had remained strong, unyielding inside of his niece oh. and none of this would have happened <laughs> but he took his eye off the ball and his niece and then she had to go and make some decisions of her own he look he has been 
the least involved in his business this mm-hmm. season that he's ever been. Normally, he has his eyes on everything. He's leaving things to her. She's screwing up. And then he's not recognizing that this is a cry for help because he's too busy trying to redeem himself. Mm-hmm. But the problem yeah. is you can't have one foot in and one foot out if yeah. you are a criminal. And that's what he realizes. Yeah. When, especially like when he's getting like beat, you've got like, like flashes of his like baptism. Mm-hmm. Uh, which you know could be seen as like being born again or something like that, and this is to me him being like reborn as like oh, 100% the original. Reborn as visually the devil. because yeah. we get that baptism by fire mm-hmm. as he sets these men ablaze. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Um, awesome. Uh, that was spot on. <laughs> I'm saying that was spot on. Congratulations. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you were saying something cool about Ulrich that he that you guys how much you guys talk like in between episodes. Uh, no, he's just been very complimentary and, and just sent me a couple of emails from wherever he, wherever he is in the world right now. I think I guess he's um, he's uh, he's back in Denmark somewhere, mm-hmm. but uh, I think he's making his way soon mm-hmm. to Pittsburgh. Mm-hmm. Right. Yeah. Um, yeah, and you know, enough with just labeling Stowe as the crazy one. <laughs> <man>. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because <laughs> this this Kyle Proctor guy's got some issues of his own. Right, sure. he's just had more years to internalize the crazy. Mm-hmm. Like you still are dealing with it out loud. He now is just dealing with it all behind the eyes. Well, mm-hmm. I feel with Kai, like Banshee is his town. He is this notorious mayor. I mean, he. Yeah. I mean, and yes, and he needs to fulfill that once again he's definitely he, he keeps the lid on whatever craziness is inside and, mm-hmm. you know he's he, he has a handle on it that is the you know can we talk about, are we going to talk about fraser at all let's talk yeah. about yeah. Fraser. Um, With the eye situation well not he's just the eye situation blind. right yeah. it was actually i'm trying to find my question and i can't find it but uh one of our fans mentioned that he thinks fraser recognizes hood's voice when he goes, ah, oh, the yeah. voice of reason. And then he goes, sheriff? And so I thought that was interesting. I didn't quite I, pick up on that, but I yeah. thought that was an interesting theory. I don't think necessarily that he knows Sheriff Hood. I think that as somebody who is blind and is a criminal, he recognizes someone who is a player sure. and is stunned to discover that someone who is so firm and is like definitely somebody who has been around the He's block. He's a criminal. He's, sa- he's savvy in the in the right. world of the of the uh, of he the, sounds the like a criminal yeah. he sounds like a criminal who knows what he's talking about who's not fumbling at anything to find out that that guy is a sheriff must be a huge surprise absolutely yeah, well, you know I, I I'm sorry I mentioned like the eye situation because like in the opening shot of when the close-up of when we really see Frazier with his glasses off like I feel he's the type of guy that really looks into your soul so with hood yeah I mean immediately be, without even seeing, he knows this person. He has just saw mm-hmm. the soul of this man. Hmm. Yeah. Well, criminals always recognize him for who he is. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because um, he he doesn't talk like a cop. But listen, Job says that in our flashback, he's like, "We do, I deal with criminals because at least I know what I'm dealing with." Right. You know, they've got this same code, I suppose. Mm-hmm. It's true. Because with cops, they could either be honest cops or they could mm-hmm. be dirty cops. But if a criminal, a criminal is a criminal is a criminal. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's the truth. Yeah. All right. <laughs> Uh, so obviously Rebecca not thrilled that uh, she landed her her uncle in some serious serious crud so she goes to Sheriff Hood looking for some help and he's (laughs) not into it nope not into it at all sorry oh he's gonna kill him (sighs) that sucks yeah (laughs) tough luck yeah Uh, which good thing she runs into Brock who is furious to discover that Emily is along with him Mm -hmm. and drags Hood along for what he is just, it's going to be the most daring breakout of all time. Yeah, well, he's got to be calling him out for like, look, I just helped you go after this guy who Mm -hmm. killed your woman. Like, are you really going to let this happen? Yeah. So he marches in with his gun and nearly gets himself killed before Hood shuts it down and is like, look, we just want the woman. You can keep, you can keep him. Yeah. And Frazier is so absolutely like tickled by this because it's just like what Mm -hmm. okay uh and that settles that but kai proctor is never going to forget this moment is never going to forget sheriff hood leaving him to die oh no it's going to come back to bite him i'm sure 100 percent. yeah there's Mm -hmm. no love lost between the two well during this scene also i mean it did give a chance a chance for um hood and job to rekindle i mean Hood at least use his last, hopefully not, 
last favor with Job. It allowed some kind of communication. A communication, yes, but rekindling, no. Asking for a favor when he's already pissed at you. There's it's the no lowest re- of the low. He doesn't even call and say, like, I want to talk to you. He doesn't say anything. He just goes, I wouldn't ask if I didn't have to. Like, mm-hmm. okay. All right, fine. All right, I, I was uh, optimistic here, guys. Come on. <laughs> this is Banshee. There's no room for, <laughs> no optimism. Room for optimism. Only <laughs> blood and disappointment. Except for Corden <laughs> and Carrie. Are we there yet? That was an optimism uh, let's talk segue. About it. Yes, right here. I'm opt- optimistic about them. Right, he hands her the divorce papers. She's not ready. She's not ready. Neither no. of them is ready, which is f- amazing mm-hmm. to not be ready to get divorced. Perfect. Yeah, because <laughs> at the top of the season, you know, they were dangerously close, but it mm-hmm. seems like they may be on their way to a reconciliation. Uh, I assume. Based on us like discovering that Gordon has some fighting skills and some weapon skills, <laughs> that uh, he'll be joining the assault next episode. He also knows oh, what yeah. a five point five six NATO green tip is. Yes, he does. <laughs> so yeah. that's something. <laughs> is he going to shove that five point five six NATO green tip Uh-oh. in your eye? Shut your no. mouth. Else. Shut your mouth. <sighs> Um, But yeah, it's great to see that the two of them are at least conflicted about this, that Mm -hmm. they're thinking about it. Gordon is still very much an active parent. Billy Raven gets some screen time. Oh, yeah. Isn't that nice? He's back to arresting kids for smoking pot. Uh, (laughs) Deva, you'd think she would have learned from her mistakes. Not so. No, she can't learn from her mistakes because her father, her bio dad, is enabling her. Every time she gets in trouble, he rewards her with attention. Mm-hmm. So why wouldn't she keep doing what she's doing, you know? It's a good point. And her her dad dad hasn't been there, right? So he hasn't been uh, I guess punishing her. He hasn't been present like he hasn't that. Been present. What do you think, not... Isaac? I don't know. Okay. Well, he's he's not really yeah, Gordon's not really doing a good job. He's not really communicating or talking to her, talking it out with her. I, I think would he's say doing that he the is. right thing. Every he time did. that he sees her, he's very genuine. He's very open. He's he's being a good dad. And he's he's writing off her homework assignments. She's been absent, and he's like, listen, you need to cut this out. But this is, goes too far, and I think he's doing a great thing by letting her stay in jail. He's probably going to come back in a couple hours. Oh, like mm-hmm. the next day. He's got to set yeah. boundaries for her. Overnight. Yeah. He was just going to make her stay yeah. overnight, but of course Hood sees her in there and is like nah screw that get out of there I'm taking you home uh, Gordon obviously right, righteously furious like stay away from my kid but it looks like the two of them will be teaming up uh, next episode which is exciting for this fan yeah and I was thinking that maybe I just feel like there was a little jewel planted in that scene where mm. Hood asks Gordon about Anna. Yeah. And he goes, where's Anna? And Gordon doesn't register. What are you talking about? Where is your wife? And so I don't, I feel like Hood letting Deva out of jail, uh, making Gordon angry, this possible reconciliation with Carrie, and then throwing Anna in there, I just feel like something's going to go down with the three of them. Oh, no. Gordon's the one who dies. Oh, no. Don't say that, man. Yeah. yeah, I'm calling I, it. I, I I'm agree. calling it right now. Gordon bites it next episode, and maybe sugar too, because I think it wouldn't suffice to have oh, just no. one. Mm-hmm. No, no, no. Uh-uh. Okay. I hope not. No. Well, we we are right, so we see. I mean, well, here, not, let's not, not talk about yeah, scenes yeah. from next episode. Let's let's jump into uh, <laughs> let's talk about Kurt Bunker because we get the most bunker that we've gotten since episode five, and I think. One of the key, I know, Take I know, easy. he's ripped and he's intense and he's righteous. I get it. It's covered in tattoos. I was just wanted to shout out uh, Nazneen. Yes, she's been tweeting me about Bunker's uh, sweaty weightlifting scene. Yeah. Love it. How many tweets were sent over one scene? Just a few. Okay. Well, fair enough. But this scene between Bunker and his former neo-Nazi buddies yeah, lays the groundwork that. for one of the key storylines of next season. Easily. Yeah, I think so, or at least I hope so. Mm-hmm. Uh, finding out that his brother is the head of the mm-hmm. the neo Nazis, yeah. there, which is like we were like, well, why did he come back to Banshee? Because his brother, like, he's what got to get vengeance against his brother. He's got to well, but straight. here's the thing, right? We go back to his story from episode five. There was no brother figuring into that. It was his father was abusing him, mm-hmm. and these local neo Nazis took him in and kicked the crap out of his father. Which means that if his brother was a part of that group and was ignoring the abuse the whole time and then just hmm. just sort of launched into it on his own terms. There's something Something's there. Something's missing. There's something very crucial missing from this story. Well, also, he says, your brother should have killed you when he had the chance. Mm-hmm. So it's like, well, yeah. it's just okay. 
serious. Also, by him becoming a cop, he's already a target. They 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 say from the get go, "Oh, you are a pig," and that that just means mm -hmm. for them in their mindset, he, he's a traitor. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, sorry, I just saw from B Dubs on Twitter. According to Mister Hoon Lee, Hood and Joe were on a break. <sighs> Yeah. Oh, they're on a break. Oh man, I did right. Never works space. out. Never works yeah. out. The trial break. separation. Yes, trial yeah. separation. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, but yeah, I love seeing Bunker in action. Uh, I love how intense and how he's freaking <laughs> thrilled that yeah. he's here. He yeah. is so ready. He is, he is so ready for, for fight. this fight. Yeah. And he knows. He knows that his new dad is totally gonna back him. <laughs> right, new dad. new dad, Sheriff Hood. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Do you see? There was just like this, like small moment where, like, um, when Brock comes in and finds out they have Emily, and he's like, "Here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna do this, that, and the other." And like, he's in the back, and he's got his number, his hand on the phone already, like mm -hmm. ready to dial. Yes. Like, what? What about what's the next order? You know? Yeah. Like, I love that little bit of like just ah, it's awesome. He's just ready. Yeah. Uh, right. Tom has sent in a question for you, and we'll, <laughs> and we'll get to that Ooh. when we go to our question and answer portion. I think we're ready to Are go. we? Oh. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Okay, well, Tom Pelfrey, our, uh, our bunker, yeah. says for you... Oh, sorry, I just lost it. Wow. Come on. Fail. Okay, I'm sorry, moving on. I'll, I'll find it. That's fine. Oh, no. Oh. My question for Langley is, will you ride me on your handlebars during your next race? <laughs> <laughs> no. <laughs> Anyone but Tom, he's a big guy. <laughs> and what he means is triathlon racing, right? Oh, wow. Yeah, that's right, yeah. Um, no, he wouldn't be very aerodynamic. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, that's, that's what it's all Maybe about. Maybe he just wants to go to Hawaii. I don't, yeah. Uh, that would mean me getting to world champs. Mm. Uh, Your top 10 maybe, finisher. Yeah, you know, you, yeah, you got to get on the podium, man, to make it there and... Uh, it just the amount of training that you need to do that is, is, is not realistic. With all that heavy lifting of, of Tom as well. Yeah. No, he'd be he'd be too big. <laughs> well, that's the thing, though. If you use him on your practice bike, you on your practice oh. rounds, you'll be working that much harder to go fast. So I when you run with him on my shoulders. Yeah. Right? Okay. Well, but that's what I'm saying. You train with that extra weight, and then once you shrug it off, you'll be... And he'll get me to Kona. Exactly. Yes. Okay. So, yes. Tom Pelfrey. Yes. I will, I will take you on my bike. <laughs> Beautiful. Any, Only for training. Anywhere. <laughs> uh, any other questions? Um, we have a lot of care, uh, questions about your backstory as far as Colonel Stowe. How yeah. much you've been given and how much you have had to fill in the blanks. Yeah. You know, we touched on earlier, but there, there, is a, a, there was a fair amount of kind of backstory exposition that, that Stowe goes into in his office mm -hmm. when he's t talking to Haddock. Um, but yeah, I mean, the thing is, this guy is highly decorated, um, highly competent, uh, professional recon marine leader, mm -hmm. um, who at some point in time has, you know, I think what, what goes down in Afghanistan leads to him going through some kind of breakdown. Mm -hmm. um, and then obviously the powers that be realize that he's no longer the competent uh, efficient uh, professional that he was and he gets passed over and he gets he gets you know he doesn't get demoted but he ends up being in charge of this uh, old antiquated uh, military base that is you know de demilling mm -hmm. all this gear from the war zone I mean you know as a as a as a as a serious operator that is not where he wants to be mm -hmm. and what he wants to be in charge of and um I mean, his backstory, you know, like I said, he's a, he's a patriot. He's a, yeah. um, a, a very physical being, and he recognized that early on in his life, and there was a calling to, uh, to being a professional military man. Um, his fighting skill set is, yeah. is incredible. Mm -hmm. um, and... Uh, <sighs> Yeah, what else? What else can you say? <laughs> that's good. That's I enough. I mean, in, yeah. in terms of me preparing for this guy, I think I think um, I, I was I was given a, a seven month uh, boot camp, if you will, uh, eight years ago when I when I when I shot Generation Kill for HBO, which mm -hmm. was uh, you know it was just such a fortunate kind of coincidence where I, that's David Simon right there. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, and Ed Burns and. Uh, you know, the, the, there was. I fell in love with the uh, with the U.S. Marine Corps in, while filming that, while playing a you know a recon marine, 
and uh, so a lot of my of 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 my knowledge of um, of of the core that I used for Stowe came from those seven months that I spent where I you know the a couple of my good mates on that show were recon marines themselves who actually trained us mm-hmm. and were the military advisors in the you know in the show and uh, so th- that helped me preparing uh, for the role and just kind of being in the right mental state yeah that makes sense cool. now how does it feel to play a bad guy usually personally I always think bad guys are more rich in character you know in depth how do you feel playing the bad guy the villain or one of the many villains in Banshee you know I with this show in particular I, I've never been on a show before being involved in a project where I've just looked forward to seeing reading the next episode as mm-hmm. much as as I did and I think the whole cast felt like this we just couldn't wait to get our hands on the next script um, I, I love playing this character I really uh, he was he's, he's such fun um, I think I like playing characters that are this dark because I get I get to go there with absolute freedom mm-hmm. yeah. and uh, and explore that side of myself and feel safe to do so um, I think bad guys have more fun. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I wanted to know, actually, we got a, a fan question yeah. from Christine. Your experience as an actor torturing Carrie yeah. or Ivana. I mean, she takes a beating and her performance is yeah. incredible. But how was that for you? Yeah, that was the, that was the hard. That was the probably the, the hardest place for me to go to. Mm-hmm. Um, I mean, my, the weird contradiction about me and the characters that I often play and this character in particular is that I, I'm not a big believer in violence, uh, <laughs> any kind of violence. Um, uh, I, I'm terrified of, 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 of real guns, <laughs> <laughs> uh, except Adam Targum will probably, yeah, he'll have something to say about that because he took, he took me to the range down in South Carolina and we had a lot of fun. Oh. Uh, but I, I abhor any kind of violence, especially violence towards women and children and... Um, you know, I guess there it's just it's 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 finding the truth in it and finding you know Stowe's motivation for punishing her. Mm. Yeah. Um, mm. And at the end of the day, the, even though there this is seriously there is serious emotional motivation here to hurt her, mm-hmm. which you see at the end of the scene when I hand it over to Murphy to carry on. I mean, there 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 there, there is almost this kind of. He's almost having an orgasm when he hears her. He's sa- he's satisfied. He, he is, likes yes, it a lot. That, that is yeah, yeah. absolutely. Mm-hmm. Um, but yeah, it was it was it was kind of tough to go there, especially because Ivana is such a sweetheart. Mm-hmm. She is such right. an angel of a human being. Uh, but you know, then you got to remember you're you're playing. You're having you're having, you, and you got to enjoy it. You got to mm-hmm. enjoy whatever it is that you are doing. <laughs> right. yeah. Yeah. Uh, I have an actor question for you. Yeah. And twofold. Did you did you audition in your accent or an American accent? And if you did do the American accent, when did you drop it and let them know your real voice? Oh no no no! They they knew they knew from the word go. Uh, I was I was in in South Africa. Um, okay. At home when uh, when when Banshee contacted me mm-hmm. about about the part and um, it had, yeah Greg had seen a bunch of stuff that I okay. had done. Um, so he was fully aware. Everyone was fully aware of where I was from mm-hmm. and what I sounded like. But I've done. I've played American enough to know. I think Alexa Fogel was the casting director on this right. on this show, and she's mm-hmm. also the casting director on Generation Kill. Oh, great! And I'd had about five or six auditions for GK with with her, mm-hmm. so she knew that I could do the accent. Oh, great. So that was never an issue. Okay. Yeah. Right, great. Well, uh, unfortunately, we are running out of time. Mm-hmm. Um, so it's time that we go- jump. Uh, well, actually, uh, Isaac, do you want to talk about that news and gossip? I guess, yeah, I guess I can expand on it. Yes. Yes. TV news. Isaac, what news do you have for us this week? Hot <laughs> off the presses. We haven't heard this yet. Um, <laughs> I'm so excited. Relativity sets Adam Targum to adapt SEAL Team 6 hero tale, Fearless. That's great. Awesome. Congratulations. Yay, Adam Targum. <laughs> Shout out. I, th- I think he works on Banshee. I'm not I'm Yeah, he writes certain. the majority of the episodes. Good uh, job, right? But yes, the tale of Adam Brown, SEAL Team 6 operator, who overcame personal demons, including drug addiction and jail time. It's going to be great. Oh. Awesome. Well, congratulations. The books are supposed to be incredible. Yeah. Congratulations, Adam, and I look forward to seeing it. Uh, all right, it's time for predictions. And now, you're after Buzz TV. 
Predictions. Season finale. <laughs> Two words both look forward to and dreaded the world over. Mm-hmm. I'm just going to say it right now. Uh, just game maker odds. Gordon bites it, two to one. Sugar bites it, three to one. Job bites it, ten to one. Uh, Carrie bites it, twenty to one. Hood bites it, a hundred to one. Okay, love it. Uh, a million to one, except for all but Gordon. I could see Gordon biting it, but a I, million to one for anyone else. Really, sugar too? Yeah, sugar too, man. Don't you touch, touch my sugar? I love, it. I love your sugar. I wouldn't want to get rid of your sugar. Yeah. Well, well done, all man. your sugar. We got some good lives. Well, so Samantha this episode. Worthen, who plays Rebecca's mom, I believe, mm-hmm. just shouted us out and said we're on fire tonight. Oh well, yeah. thank you so much. It's very kind of you. Uh, anyone else thoughts for next episode? Well, yes, we're we're going to see. I mean. Whatever happens to Stowe, I feel that ring is going to come off his finger in some way is really good. He keeps on twisting the ring. Uh-huh. We always see that in the beginning credits. Boom. In some kind of epic fight, I feel that's like the first thing that's going to come off the ring and all that. Also, I feel... Wait, uh, let him answer. He said it's on the tip of his tongue. He's got something. I, uh, I'm not going to I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna. say anything. Oh. Oh, no, tell us. <laughs> I'm just nodding along. I, look, the, the ring, the, the, there's the, something different. Definitely happens with that ring. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, yeah. No, that the ring is involved. Good call. Mm-hmm. Um, and you know that there's there's going to be a, a massive kind of uh, showdown, uh, like there is in the Good, the Bad, and the Ugly. But <laughs> but you know that is not necessarily the only massive f- fight scene or sequence that you're going to see in the episode. And uh, you know, I think a, a lot of people are expecting. Um, Hood to to meet, you know, Stowe head on. Mm. Um, I'm just I, putting I, it uh, out there. There may yeah. be another character that gets involved. Yeah. I'm gonna. That, that can no I make predictions? Go ahead. Sorry, I'm being oh. such a loud mouth. Um, yeah. <laughs> I think Carrie gets to kick some ass after getting beaten. I hope she gets to kick Colonel Stowe's ass. Sorry. <laughs> yeah. um, At the very uh, least, yeah. uh, your your number two guy. Thank you. Yeah. yeah. And then also Kai. I think. I really want to see Kai torture Rebecca because I'm sick. But what she did to him <laughs> was just, to me, uh, you can never come back from that. But I think what will happen instead is he will take all of that anger and turn it on the next Frazier. Ron Frazier on his sure. enemy. What? And then the other thing is that I'm hoping we're going to get an answer to, sorry, is that Colonel Stone knows Hood. Okay. Maybe. I think uh, Kai might enjoy being tortured by Rebecca, given her nice history. <laughs> yeah. well, Brock, I think, is, I mean, I'm scared. And Burton's going to, I think, put some uh, vengeance on Rebecca. Or she, he's going to put a whipping on her. He's I not allowed. What's your prediction? Special needs. Uh, I predict uh, a lot of blood. Okay. Blood. blood and banshee. Blood, blood and banshee. <laughs> There's going to oh, yeah. be blood. Well, There's going to be buckets of blood. Oh, hell yeah. Oh, well, please. Langley, I want to thank you so much for joining us on the show. <laughs> yeah, um, no. Where can the people find you online? Um, uh, I guess I'm on Twitter at Langley Kirkwood. <laughs> okay. Uh, <laughs> and is there anything else coming up you want people to know about? Um, th- I'm shooting something next month. I'm not going to give away what that is because, you know, uh, hey, m- maybe it's season four of Banshee. Maybe. Ooh. Ooh. Um, but uh, then again, maybe not. <laughs> <laughs> But I'm, I'm going to be shooting a project, uh, yeah, starting next month. All right. Well, thank you so much for coming. You've been yeah, an absolute thank delight. Thank you for having me. It's been fun. Yeah. yeah. Uh, Manus, where can the people find you? Find me at Rest Fiction. Just check out restaurantfiction.com. That's what it stands for. I think all of you fanchies, you know, er- out there would really enjoy uh, on also iTunes, Restaurant Fiction. I'm Miss Oriana Leo on Twitter, Oriana Leo on Instagram. I'm cleaning up my YouTube page and creating makeup chair diaries for you all. So please find them, enjoy them, tweet me. I love the conversations with my fancy babes. Oh man, I was gonna say fancy babes. You can. Oh, I just did. Oh. oh. Hey, it's Isaac Johnson on Twitter, <laughs> the Isaac Johnson on Instagram, and also the Isaac Johnson on YouTube. You can watch my music video and a short film called The Forge. No coincidence. All right. <laughs> and uh, folks, you can find. Well, no, it is a coincidence. It is a coincidence. Yeah. No, it's yeah. Uh, <laughs> you can on, find man. me on Twitter. I'm Matt Lieberman. That's M A T T L I E B E R M A N. You can find all my videos for SourceFed and SourceFed Nerd on YouTube, as well as my personal channel, youtubecom slash c slash Matt Lieberman and Better Call Saul and Helix here. Thank you all so much. We'll see you next week for the finale. Goodbye. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. 
to watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Fancy Babes Rule! The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals.